I know you can see my mic. I'm pretty sure you can. I'm sorry for that. How are you guys? It's been almost a month. I have reasons, I promise. So let me tell you about what was going on. Um, also, hi, Dad, in case you watch this, and I'll tell you guys about that later. It's a funny story. Um, so my father-in-law has diabetes and um, tacos running around in the background. Almost three weeks ago, um, it was a Sunday, they called and said that they took him to the hospital because he was like be like kind of out of breath and like lightheaded, so they were thinking his blood sugar was low, which it was. You know, they did him, they did the tests on him, and they were like, you'll probably be out, you know, tomorrow afternoon or something, so he was like, whatever. Monday we go visit, and um, they do a few like normal tests on him, and the EKG, the heart test, uh, comes back weird, they say. So they're like, we're gonna keep you for another day, we gotta do another test on you. So he's like, super irritated that, but I mean, he has to stay, so we're like, okay. The next day, they do another test on him and they're like, like there's something going on with your arteries. So we're gonna have to do this thing where we like basically like put something in your arm and like travel it through your artery to the blockage and then uh, we'll find out what we have to do from there. So that was already like, enough, like just thinking about that. So he, he was, we were getting like pretty worried at this point because um, at the time they told him that it was Tuesday and they were telling him they were going to do this thing on Wednesday, the day after. And he's already like, like he was in the mindset he was going to be leaving on Monday and he's been there two extra days. So shh, come here. Come here, you stink. So, uh, the next day they, they do this test on him and they're like, so this could go a few different ways. Um, we, if the ardor, if the blockage isn't that bad, we can break it up with the, whatever this thing is we're putting in your vein, um, or in your artery. We can break it, brock it up, bro Blake, brock, break it up with that. We can do that. We can do, there's some other thing. Oh, I think they said if it wasn't that bad, then he, if he just eats right for a few months, it'll be fine. And then they were like, or we can break it up with this thing if it's, if it's something that's possible, or you're going to have to get a bypass. So he went into the hospital thinking, you know, it was just, they're going to smack, slap my wrist and tell me that I need to eat better. Okay, whatever. He's in really good shape and really good health for being a diabetic in his fifties. So we weren't concerned, we weren't that concerned about him, you know, getting back up on his feet and he probably just was like, I'm gonna eat more sweets than I probably should. And that's, I mean, everyone has moments like that, I guess. So anyway, <laughs> they, they do this thing on him and they're like, you're gonna have to get the bypass. So he's like, oh my god, he's terrified at this point because he wasn't even remotely prepared for this. Um, he had an EKG probably six months ago and apparently nothing came back, so I don't really know if this could- I don't know if this kind of problem is something that could like come up out of nowhere, like it apparently did. They had his surgery scheduled for Monday, so he gets to Baltimore on Friday or Saturday, one of those days. So between Wednesday and the Monday where he's supposed to have his surgery, they're saying, we're gonna just do the robotic one, you know, it makes a little incision, because he was really concerned about the, the scar that you get when you have a bypass, he didn't want that of all things to be concerned about. So they were like, we'll just do the robotic one, you know, we go and make a little incision on your side and go in and do everything that way and fix it that way. So this was in his mind as to what was gonna happen. So he was, you know, getting used to the idea and throughout the weekend he was feeling a little bit more calm about it. So Monday morning, Andrew and I go up there uh, at like six o'clock in the morning because his surgery was scheduled for like seven and they were gonna take him back at 6.30. We're, we're all sitting in the room hanging out and he's, he's nervous, but he's okay because they've been talking to him about this for a few days. And the surgeon finally comes in at like 6.15. This is 15 minutes before they're gonna take him back. And the surgeon's like asking him all these dumb questions like, what do you do? What's your job? You like your job? You know, like trying to act like he cares, but they, he really doesn't, he's just trying too hard. So we're all standing there feeling kind of awkward. And the surgeon goes, so I, I want to talk to you about how I think I would be doing a disservice to you by doing the robotic bypass. And everyone in the room was just like, like you could see everyone tense up because we knew where this was going. We knew it and they were doing it 15 minutes before he had to go back for surgery. Can you imagine? Andrew's dad's just like, uh-huh. And he's like, um, if we do the robotic one, you're probably gonna have to come back every few years and get 
Okay, so, like I was saying before, Taco rudely interrupted me. You're rude, you're so rude, baby. He's saying, like, you'll have to come back every few years and get something replaced or something done, and it's not something that you can just, like, it's not the kind of surgery you can have and just be, you know, okay and not have to worry about anything again. He was like, and it's not just one artery that we'd have to fix, you have three arteries that we'd have to fix. So, we were like... The, the surgeon is essentially like, we're gonna do a regular triple bypass, so be prepared for this to be out. Open. Open. So, within a span of 15 minutes, he went from having, like, a, a less invasive surgery to having this literally broken. He had it, um, last Monday, and we went and saw him Tuesday, and he looked pretty good. Um, he, he had, like, this harness thing on to, I guess, hold it together in case he sneezes or something. Because I think they, like, put wires, like, they, essentially they zip-tied his sternum, I guess is what we're talking about, remember? Ooh, so, he, like, couldn't laugh and stuff, and then they were like, wow, you're healing so fast, we're gonna send you home on Thursday! After... Three days, two, well, surgery was Monday, so Tuesday and Wednesday, two full days of recovery in the hospital, and then you're sending him home. So, that was a mess. We, I, I was at the hospital. I, I, every day that I've had off aside from um, Monday, or Sunday and Monday this week, I was at the hospital, so I didn't have time to do anything on any of my days off, and even, um, I don't think we went to the hospital on days that I was working. But whatever. He's okay. Uh, you, if you looked at him right now, you would never know he had just gotten surgery, honestly. So it's pretty cool. He's healing really fast and everything's fine, so. So anyways, let's move on to something more uh, humorous. I started YouTube like three years ago and um, I didn't really mention it to anyone in my family. Like, my mom found out about it probably like six or seven months after I started. It was because I, you know, I'm not in the house with my family, so it wasn't like, hang on, guys, guys, go record. Like it wasn't something that I was just casually telling them about, and I never mentioned it. Uh, uh, this past weekend, um, it's like 12 a.m., and I get a text from my my dad, and it's a picture that I had posted on Twitter, like a drawing that I did, uh, probably like a week ago that I had posted on Twitter, and he was like, hey, I was looking up colored pencil drawings. I saw this, and I thought of you. And I thought he was messing with me. I was like, oh, he found me on Twitter. That's so funny. So I was like, so funny that you say that. That's my picture. Where did you find it? And he said, at Aveen, some chick who does YouTube video, ga uh, video game videos. And I was like, and then he texted again. and was like, but my daughter is much sweeter and better than she'll ever be. And I was like, He's totally messing with me. I text him back and I'm like, yeah, I never told you guys because, uh, I don't know, I, just, I, I think it was dumb. And then he texts me back and says, holy shit, I just looked at her picture, it's you. <laughs> and I was like, he was not messing with me. So I call him and I'm like, you didn't know that was me? And he was like, no, I just found the picture, I found the drawing, it made me think of you. So it was... Oh my god, it was so funny. Like, what are the odds that he would type in on, on Twitter, colored pencil drawings, come across the picture that I drew and think, that looks like something Melissa would draw. Right? I know. So weird. That was funny. Um, <laughs> we laughed about that for a good, like, 20 minutes on the phone, and then he went to bed. Yesterday he called and was like, why didn't you tell me? And I was like, well... And this is actually exactly what I said. I was like, well, I didn't want to be like, hey, now if you guys didn't think I was nerdy enough, let me tell you about what I do in my spare time. Because he knows about, like, cos my cosplaying and, like, video game playingness. So, I mean, it's like, whatever. And he doesn't shun me for it. He doesn't play video games, but he's like, whatever, just do what you want. Um, so he just, he, he thought that was funny, but he was like, it's so surreal, like, well, I, I was watching one of your videos earlier, and I was like, that's my daughter on the screen right now. I mean, I, I told him, and, and this was my plan all along, if YouTube ever became something that um, was like a job, I could just work from home, I didn't have to have like a real job, 
at the same time, then I would have told my family about it. But until that point, it would have just been a hobby, which it has been, so... I didn't think it was really important. Oh my gosh. So... I'm leaning, that's rude. I, I don't know if you've noticed by now, but I have disabled YouTube comments. You, you could, follow, if you follow me on Twitter, you know my opinion on, on this whole comment situation. I think, don't snort at me, come here. There's nothing to bark at. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Stop it. So, um, shit, I can't remember what I was going to say, because Taco keeps barking. You're ruining it, banana. Um, oh my gosh. So, a lot of my time in the past few weeks has been spent looking at ball-jointed dolls. Now, hear me out. I know it's weird, but I like it. Um, Asian ball-jointed dolls are, are dolls that are made of resin that you can, like, paint and buy eyes for and wigs and... If you have, like, a character... Like, a lot of people have characters that they've made up for stories or whatever, drawings, that they turn into these dolls. And they're super adorbs. They're a little bit expensive. But it's it's one of those like collectors type hobbies where it's you know, it's not they're not cheap. <laughs> so I've been like obsessing over those again. I was in love with them years ago, back in like 2006. Um, but it just got to the point where I couldn't like financially continue the hobby. I'm hoping Maybe, you know, with money I get for, like, birthday and Christmas or something, I can, like, put it towards getting another doll. Um, I used to have one. She was my little Fei Fei. She was super cute, and I loved her, but I had to get rid of her. It was sad. It was a very sad day. But I'm still in contact with the person that has her, so it's nice. And I know, I know it's weird, but, it, guys, it's fun. And if you're artsy, if you're an artsy person and are open to having a doll, look them up. Look up, uh, what brands? I wouldn't even look up brands, just look up, just, just look up dolls, like ball joint dolls. Because brands, sometimes the, the pictures on the websites are creepy. I'll admit it. I don't know, it's just really fun. It's like super customizable and no one's doll is the same, it's just cool. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty neat, God. Oh. Um, excuse me. The other day I was able to edit, um, the podcast video that Remy Volk and I did for, um, uh, a machine for pigs. I was editing a little bit more. Um, I have all of our audio edited. I just have to put in like videos and clips and background music and that kind of stuff, which shouldn't take as long as it took to actually edit the audio. But I'm pretty sure it's like an hour and a half long, so I <laughs> hope you guys are ready for that. Taco, your breath is stanky. Um. <laughs> this is long. I'm sorry. Um, aside from that, Nothing else has been going on. Just been living life, man. Oh, you know what? Um, I know I haven't been doing a lot on YouTube, and um, a lot of it is because YouTube itself has just become a website that I'm... It, it's not as free and fun as it used to be. I feel like it's, you're just... Not necessarily restricted, it's just they, they've changed so much about it that it's just... I mean... How many people get videos in their sub boxes? Not many, and the only videos you get are from bigger YouTubers because that's the way they've set it up now. It doesn't go by. I mean, it, it, the best thing that they used to do was when it had the channel name and the last recent videos they uploaded, and it was listed like that. It was so easy to find videos you hadn't seen. I don't know why they changed it. I I just but they they just ruined it in my mind for me. Um, but I haven't like not been doing anything. I've been streaming a lot more. I stream at least two or three times a week um, for two hours at a time. So I'll put the my Twitch URL or all in the description, and you can click that and go like it or favorite it or whatever the hell you do. I, I don't I don't know what you do to keep the page bookmarked or something. I don't know how you guys do it. You do, do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been live streaming there, and it's been a lot of fun and. Uh, I think I'm gonna focus more on live streaming than doing YouTube videos. I mean, I'm gonna do YouTube videos every once in a while, like vlogs and stuff, but I don't see myself doing another Let's Play. I, I have way more fun live streaming because I can talk to you guys while I'm doing it, so I just I find that to be more fun. Anyway, go check it out. It's down there, and um, I'm gonna go because this is long and I have to edit this. 
Uh, I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye!